After months of debate, data crunching, and some very tense discussions, NASA has finally made a huge call. The next Boeing Star Liner mission will not carry astronauts. Yep, the spacecraft's upcoming flight, Starliner 1, is going uncrewed, with launch now planned for no earlier than April 2026. But here's the real question. Why? What's the strategic move behind this decision? How much will it really help Boeing after billions in losses? And most importantly, will taxpayers end up saving money or paying more for fewer flights? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. Remember that dramatic mission in June 2024? Astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams came dangerously close to disaster when Starliner's thrusters malfunctioned during approach to the International Space Station. Those issues stranded them in orbit for months. Although Starliner did eventually dock, NASA wasn't taking any more chances. After an intense review, the agency told Boeing, you're bringing that vehicle home, but it's coming back without humans on board. To fill the gap, SpaceX launched a Dragon mission in September 2024, carrying just two astronauts instead of four, ensuring Wilmore and Williams could safely return home in March 2025. So, what actually caused those thruster issues? NASA and Boeing eventually traced it to overheating in tiny Teflon seals inside the thruster valves. These seals were breaking down, disrupting performance. The good news? They not only identified the issue, but also managed to recreate the exact failure on the ground, which is huge for understanding the fix. Now, Boeing's next test, Starliner 1, will be all about proving that redesigned thruster system before astronauts ever climb aboard again. In other words, this next flight is like Starliner's training pants mission a prerequisite to achieving full certification for manned operational missions. Even though Boeing is shifting toward a cargo flight right now, their ultimate goal hasn't changed, completing certification to carry crew to the ISS. The original commercial crew contract, signed back in 2014, called for six operational missions once certified. But after all the changes, the updated plan looks a little different. After Starliner 1, there'll be three crewed missions, but only after the spacecraft is certified safe. Starliner 2, 3, and 4, before the ISS retires. There's technically funding for two optional flights after that, but with the station nearing its end of life, those are looking unlikely. If you're counting, that means Boeing's total Starliner manifest now stands at seven flights, three test flights, one uncrewed, Starliner 1, and three crewed missions to follow. This contract reshuffle also affects Boeing's launch partner, ULA. Boeing originally bought nine Atlas V rockets, but with fewer missions now, a few of those launches might end up going unused. NASA's holding on to them as options for now, but there's talk they could be sold to other customers, maybe even Amazon, which has been snapping up Atlas V's for its Kuiper satellite project. Now, here's the part that really puts Boeing in a tough spot. The money. The Starliner program has become a financial black hole for Boeing, with losses climbing to more than $2 billion. That's right. Billion with a B. Why? Because of the contract. NASA's commercial crew program runs on a fixed price model, meaning NASA pays a set amount for each milestone, no matter how long or how expensive it gets for Boeing to complete it. So when Starliner hit delays, redesigns, and extra testing, Boeing had to foot the bill themselves. Every time they missed a milestone or had to rework a system, that was money out of Boeing's pocket, not NASA's. This setup has been described inside Boeing as nothing short of disastrous. Here's the brutal reality. Boeing has already logged multi-billion dollar losses on Starliner across several financial quarters. Those funds are gone. They're what business folks call sunk costs. But despite bleeding money, Boeing can't just walk away. 
the company is still obligated to fulfill its contract with NASA, unless NASA itself decides to make a change. And no one really knows how much more that's going to cost. At this point, Boeing's best bet might be to limit further losses, maybe even break even on those last few flights. Quitting now would not only leave money on the table, but also deal a massive blow to Boeing's reputation in spaceflight. So even though Starliner isn't likely to have a life beyond the ISS era, Boeing might be playing the long game. They could still market Starliner to future private space stations, like those being built by Axiom or Starlab, where having a second crew transport option besides SpaceX would be valuable. From that angle, continuing Starliner makes sense, even if it's painful in the short term. But this whole situation might permanently change how Boeing approaches government contracts. After what happened with Starliner, insiders say Boeing's management has no intention of ever touching another fixed-price contract again. Instead, they'll likely stick to what's known as cost-plus contracts, where NASA or the government reimburses all expenses plus a profit margin. That's a huge contrast between old space and new space. Traditional aerospace giants like Boeing and Lockheed Martin have always operated in that cost-plus world, where risk is low but innovation is slower. Meanwhile, SpaceX has mastered the fixed-price approach, betting on efficiency, vertical integration, and fast iteration to keep costs under control. That's one of the biggest reasons SpaceX has been able to move so fast, while Boeing has struggled to keep up. Now, here's the interesting part. While Boeing's been dealing with technical issues and billions in losses, NASA hasn't given up on Starliner. And honestly, that decision makes sense from a strategic point of view. You see, right now, NASA only has one American-made spacecraft that can take humans to orbit, SpaceX's Crew Dragon. If something ever grounded Dragon, or if SpaceX shifted fully to Starship, NASA would be left without a reliable, US-based backup for crewed missions. That's not a position NASA ever wants to be in. So, even though Starliner's been a rough ride financially and technically, NASA still wants to certify it, because having two independent systems increases both safety and competition. Plus, as said, if Boeing eventually gets Starliner working, it could find new life flying crews to future commercial space stations. Not every private company wants to rely solely on SpaceX, and Starliner could give them a second option. And here's where Starliner actually has a unique advantage. It's what engineers call launcher agnostic. In theory, Starliner could be launched on different rockets, not just the Atlas V it's using today, but possibly Vulcan, or even Blue Origin's new Glenn down the road. That flexibility could become extremely important if SpaceX retires the Falcon 9 and moves everything over to Starship. Because here's the thing, if SpaceX stops flying Falcon 9, there might be no rocket left that can carry Dragon. That raises some big questions. Would SpaceX spend the time and money to redesign Dragon to fly on another rocket like Vulcan or New Glenn? Or would they just move fully to Starship, even if that means no certified human-rated spacecraft for years? It's a fascinating what-if, and it's why some people inside the space community are saying NASA should make a serious effort to certify Starliner with Vulcan at a minimum. That said, the future of Starliner is still very uncertain. Let's be honest, it hasn't had a single fully successful mission yet, while SpaceX's Crew Dragon has already completed 11 NASA's operational flights to the ISS. Dragon's proven itself to be modern, safe, and cost-efficient. Starliner, on the other hand, has gained a reputation, and not a flattering one. Some in the space community have flat out called it a money black hole, or even a complete disaster. One frustrated commenter summed it up perfectly. At this point, it seems like a big waste of taxpayer money for four missions then ISS goers splash. I cannot fathom any reason other than Boeing tears to keep this shit show going. He even joked, 
rather brutally. Hell, by the time anyone, nation or business, attempts to put another station in orbit, Starliner will resemble a Model T compared to anything that can service a station in the future. Another expressed gratitude to SpaceX. Thank the Lord for SpaceX. If the factions in Congress and NASA who wanted to give Boeing a non-competitive, sole source contract had had their wish, we'd be in a mel of a hess, as my mother-in-law used to say. So, after all these changes, the uncrewed flight, the financial losses, the revised contract, here's the big question everyone's asking. Is this new plan actually a better deal for taxpayers? Because sure, the changes might make sense for NASA and Boeing. But what about the people footing the bill? Right now, Boeing's commercial crew contract with NASA has a ceiling value of about $4.2 billion under a fixed price agreement. But here's an important detail. Boeing isn't being prepaid for launches. Funding only gets released as specific milestones are completed. That means there's still roughly $1.4 billion in unobligated funds, money that hasn't been committed yet. So when the number of operational flights goes down, the total cost to NASA should go down too. Fewer flights mean fewer payments, since each mission represents a service NASA buys once it's delivered. And since the upcoming Starliner 1 mission will be uncrewed, it will probably cost less than a normal crewed launch. Crewed flights require extra safety systems, simulations, and support, all expensive stuff. Cargo missions? Much simpler. That said, NASA hasn't publicly shared exactly how much less it'll cost, and that's where the skepticism starts to build. In fact, even some NASA veterans are uneasy about this. One 46-year-old NASA insider put it bluntly, Can we get confirmation that Starliner 1 is being done at no additional cost to NASA? Unless that's stated explicitly, I, as a 46-year NASA veteran, don't trust that Boeing hasn't rolled NASA on the cost issue 